today we're going to focus on um, this 2D gel-based uh, uh, proteomics approach to it. Um, and this whole package of uh, training material is prepared mainly by uh, two of my colleagues, Katrina Academia and Steve Freeby. And Steve Freeby has 25 years of experience in this field, and Katrina has almost 10 years of experience. I would like to thank them to put this together. And um, so what is 2D gel, two-dimensional gel electrophoresis. So um, actually the theory has been there for many, many years, more than 30 years, okay, um, if you look at the literature. And it's quite simple. Uh, there are two-dimensional separation. The, at first separation uh, uh, dimension, the proteins are separated based on their PIs, okay. Um, and then the second dimension is based on size, where the uh, protein is being saturated with SDS binding, okay? In terms of the principle, here is a, a slide showing you that um, in this field, what is actually isoelectrofocusing? Isoelectrofocusing is uh, electrophoresis in a pH gradient set up between the uh, cathode high pH and the anode low pH between this field. You have the mix of proteins. When you add the um, voltage to this field, you can see the proteins move in this field and stop at the PI. Okay, so this is the process of IEF. And of course, why uh, we need to understand a little bit why this can be done in this uh, in this um, process. That's because the proteins, they have charges, right? And then the well-known charged groups are primary, primary amines and uh, carboxyl groups. And under different pH of the, of the buffers of the protein sample, you're going to see that uh, these uh, charges can be changed. Right? Okay. In a very uh, acidic uh, environment where you have a lot of protons, you're going to see the primary amines being, you know, a, a dominant charge in, on this uh, protein. And in a very um, high pH, of course, this will, uh, this, the carboxyl group will become um, uh, the dominant charges on the group. And so when you uh, scan the pH range, you can find a pH point where the protein net charge is negative. Of course, here the sample is just one charged group versus another one. In the real protein, um, before I go to that slide, of course, other than the carboxyl group C-terminal and N-terminal, there are also lots of side chains, right, from different amino acids. Um, for example, aspirate and the glutamic acid where you have um, the carboxyl groups and lysine arginine where you, you can have primary amines groups. And, um, and another two is the histidine and tyrosine. They can also get charged and at a different um, um, pKa value. That means they have to find a, a, a different uh, pI to a pH to get charged or uh, non-charged. And here is a question. There are also some other uh, changes to, of the proteins can introduce charged groups. Can, can you name one at least? Glycosylation. That's great. Phosphorylation. That's right. Phosphorylation. So just a quick question. So the, the, once you get your isoelectric point, that's the combination of the charges of all of these different groups that are on the protein. That's right. And so because each protein is different composition, they all have different different PIs. That's right. So this is a, this will be shown in these slides, where if you for for a particular protein, okay, if you um, look at, scan the whole range of the pH, you can see that at a certain point you get mainly um, positive charges, and uh, another range of mostly negative charges and you, if you scan the whole thing you can find a point where the net charge of the proteins uh, of the protein is zero 
okay? When it's zero, you put the protein in the electric field, it does not move. That's, that's the principle uh, behind isoelectric pulsing. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so because of this, you know, how we understand how it protein moves and focuses in uh, isoelectric focusing process. There are two key um, um, things here. Number one, because we rely on the uh, uh, native charges of protein, and the possibility of the negative ones uh, sort of um, counter counteract each other, the real driving force is very weak. You probably have only a few charges. It's like in, it's like you use a horse to pull a whole train. Okay, the force is very very weak, and for this reason, we need to use really really high voltage to drive the proteins. Okay, that's why in acid extra focusing we often need thousands of voltage. Okay, uh, secondary, it takes a very long time, right, to fold, to move the proteins to their isoelectric uh, point. Okay, and uh, and all these uh, issues with uh, IF um, cell or two D approach are basically you know caused by this by this uh, 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 challenges. Okay. Meaning the, the gel that you use, would that be agarose or acrylamide? Um, acrylamide. 